getting to the truth in SR. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today, I have the pleasure of interviewing the founder of Charmington Holistics, a multidisciplinary pursuit rooted in botanicals and practical magic. Please welcome Bettina Perry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thank you. See, I did like a pitch, man. You like that, right? Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> So I, I gave that kind of 10,000-foot uh, view of your, your background, and it was literally a copy and paste from the bio you sent over to me. <laughs> yep, I would say those words <laughs> sound familiar. <laughs> um, but for the fine folks out there that are uninitiated, uh, please describe your work. Um, well, I have a uh, physical retail store. It is uh, located over in the Highland Town neighborhood here in Baltimore, and it's best described as an herbal apothecary. Um, you walk in, and there are uh, our wall of herbs. We ha carry over 120 uh, selection of, well, I don't know what I would describe as like medicinal herbs, um, things that people use medicinally. Um, and we have selections available. If you're seeking a specific herb, if you have read about a blog, uh, an herb on a blog, or you're curious about something, you can come in and purchase a quantity. Um, and then I have a couple of other little retail things. And yeah, so <laughs> botanicals and practical magic. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I've purchased stuff from there. We, we, I've been in there. I got. I think at one point I went there and I was like, just something as simple as, yo, my mask thanks, stinks. It was like, can you, <laughs> can you hook it up? And I was like, oh, we got something for that. I was like, all right, that, that's great. Yeah, yeah. We definitely um, work with a little bit of essential oils as well. And yeah. so we did have a product that was locally made at one point, a little mask refresh. So Yeah, and um, it's it's a lot of good stuff. And I'm trying to have a conversion. I'm trying to convert the, the girlfriend to, <laughs> to tea. And, you know, she's a slow adopter, but she's coming around. I've been, like, just putting a little bit of tea in the coffee. Like, uh, drop, drop. <laughs> It might be poison. I don't know. I, I think I'm ruining my relationship. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a little bit of both. You know, I am definitely a coffee lover. I love coffee, but I do drink a lot of tea. And it is kind of a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. You know, like at one point I did like make an intention in my life. I think it was even like on a vision board at one point. Like I want to drink more tea because <laughs> like I opened the cabinet one day and all of my good intentions were staring me in the face and I realized. I had sunk a lot of money into all of this. Oh, I'm at mom's. This looks good. I need to try this. And so I just, you know, started drinking a lot more tea. I still enjoy coffee and there's still caffeine. And then there's a lot of other benefits um, to using tea. So there's a lot of ritual around tea. It can be very calming and soothing and it can have some practical uh, medicinal like support to your life as well. So... So let, let's step back to where your your interest, because you, you touched on it a little bit there, where your interest in holistic living and uh, botanicals. <laughs> what, 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 can you unpack that a little bit for us? Like, where did that kind of start? And, you know, I read something about a little bit of a business hippie situation. So, so <laughs> run, it, run it down for us, please. Yeah, I refer to myself personally as a little bit of a business hippie. Um, well, um, I worked in this city for a long time as a chef. Um, and then as I got older in life, things just, you know, changed a little bit for me. And I was kind of looking to, like, redefine myself. And what I found myself when trying to redefine myself, it was a little bit of a dark night of the soul, even a creative dark night of the soul. I just went back to a lot of things that we did in my family. Mm -hmm. Um, and the things that I was kind of like raised on. And it w turned out that it was a little simpler life, um, a, a little bit more of a holistic life where we had a little bit more reverence and balance in our life for nature, getting out and being in nature and using nature, whether it was even just like getting kicked outside <laughs> to like be outside in the country as a kid, you know, your mom would like lock the door and be like, I'll see you at sundown. <laughs> um, come back then. <laughs> come back then. Yeah. I don't really don't want to see you. And so you find yourself, you know, playing with sticks and looking at plants yeah. and, and, you know, stuff like that. And so as I was, you know, in my middle thirties and, um, trying to find myself again, I had to go back to the beginning. And um, 
I just started saying, I think there's something here. And I think there's a lot of my skill set from my, you know, profession as a chef that can really like translate. And so, yeah, drinking tea and starting to experiment with magical, you know, potions and elixirs and things like that happened. <laughs> I think that's that's interesting. Like you're you're taking what you know because I actually put a new question in there related to that. Um, but you're you're taking things that you were doing professionally and kind of maybe scaling. I don't really like that word as much because it comes off as a little too businessy for me. Sure, yeah. But I, I think you're taking it to that kind of next place where you're combining something that's an interest and getting back to like I guess source and the fruit of things. Like oh, this was something I did as a kid and this was part of. My, my my history, my lineage and all. It's like, yeah, also, I'm a chef, so I know these applications. How can this become something that is a lifestyle, a, a, a business, a pursuit that you're doing? So I like that those things have come together because you can speak it because you know it. You yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess I already, I always had a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit in me. I mean, I was always, even as a chef, like had an end goal of having my own thing. I think that's a very common thing for a lot of people in the cooking profession. Um, and so I was always looking at all the angles. <laughs> I don't know. Like, where's the puck going? What's next? <laughs> How do I monetize this? Uh, yeah. so, so speak on some of the, the education and like that ultimately kind of build up where you're at now as a, as a professional. Um, sure, yeah. So, I mean, kind of, I know I keep saying back to my chef stuff, but I mean, that's a lot of who I was yeah. um, or am. I don't, yeah, who I am. Um, I always continued on with um, continuing education. And so, um, you know, when I had the chance, to kind of like switch over, um, I started taking classes, you know, when it comes to like herbalism and essential oils and making products, there's a lot of classes, there's actual schools, you can go to weekend intensives. Um, I have taken certificate courses, much like continuing education classes. Um, and so I have a couple of certifications in herbalism from, you know, two different schools, um, some stuff in aromatherapy. I've done natural perfuming, um, good manufacturing practices. At one point I was, you know, interested in doing a lot of like preserving and canning and sauces. So a little bit of like, how do you launch a food product yeah. line and all of those skills just all kind of like translated. And I did that for a number of years really like five six years just whenever I could I would try to like do something but I always kept coming back to herbalism yeah. as kind of like the root um hmm. and so as things emerged I did you know like a couple different product lines I have a product called the tonics um that were pretty popular at one point and still are and um that was a combination of me trying to blend my culinary life and herbal life together. Yeah. And I wanted to make like a herbal tonic elixir that tasted good because I, I knew that people were curious about being healthier and just the overall like turn over the last couple of years, even pre pandemic, people were more open, I think, to things that were at one point seen as alternative, which I hate that word, but it's like the only thing I can think of, yeah. you know. It's like, what's this hippy dippy nonsense? Yes. Because like, <laughs> you know, I always look at it as I've always had an interest in it. Um, at in one of the um, jobs I had, still in higher ed, but one of the jobs I had, uh, one of my friends, we used to have this running bit. We would trade on the spice road, mm -hmm. so I'd come in there with like chia seeds and turmeric, and, I love and, and, it. and, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I have this like organic ginger, brother, from Thailand." <laughs> yeah. So we would trade it and be in these little baggies, so people thought we were selling drugs. And I was like, mm -hmm. "No, these are herbs. These are good things for you. We put this in tea and make golden milk." Yep, golden milk, of course. I mean, just the fact that like you can say golden milk today in 2021, yeah. and a lot of people know what that means, and they know that turmeric is anti-inflammatory, and it's golden milk is this thing that's kind of cool to have every once in a while, or more than every once in a while. Totally, yeah. And I think it it, it aids. Because at, at that time, I was doing, like, juicing, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it aids in my my level of knowledge and having more of an openness of how do these things go together and being more connected, I think, back to one of the things you touched on, 
more connected to what's around us, the food that we're eating, the, the environment we're in. So you start seeing certain things and like, oh, yeah, ginger's from here. We have some great American ginger. I was like, that's a GMO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what a lot of this stuff is about, too. It's kind of like we're as humans kind of remembering that we're human and that we are actually like connected to nature. And, you know, like I love modern technology and all of modern advances. I'm here for it. We're here for it right now, you know, like, um, but, you know, we're still live in a natural world, which is the earth. And um, I think it's important to stay grounded and connected to that and to, you know, be outside and, you know, things like juicing and eating vegan more often, like, we know that it's better for the planet. And when when you're taking care of your body a little bit more, your mind can also be a little bit more at ease, which I think a lot of people need in this modern, you know, conundrum of a world we yeah. live in. A lot of people are suffering from anxiety, you know, just to say the least. Um, and, you know, a lot of stressors that come from living in the modern world. So making sure when we can take an opportunity for ourselves to create a little bit of like, I hate to say, it, but like self-care ritual around making that juice in the morning, yeah. having a tea at night, you know, um, gr maybe grabbing for an herbal uh, tincture or an herbal product instead of always grabbing for an Advil. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was definitely, and I, and I don't say this for for gas purposes or anything along <laughs> those lines, or the gas was like, yeah, yeah, your, your stuff is fantastic. It's the best <laughs> thing ever. Um, but I, I, I will say, like, I, as a person that... Um, because I remember, if now maybe I'm wrong, but you were in Mount Vernon Marketplace? Um, I, okay, yeah. So my business has been around Baltimore yeah. um, in various different um, iterations for a while. I definitely had some products um, in another culinary apothecary yeah. in Mount Vernon Marketplace. Yeah. Um, I've had my product, I've worked with um, everyone from Hex Ferments. We've paired the mm -hmm. tonics with the kombuchas, uh, Juniper Culinary Apothecary. I was in a retail shop on the Ave called 36 Pop for a long time. Some of the cannabis dispensaries sold the tonics at one point. Um, yeah, so the brand has been out, out and about for a while, and it, it's had a lot of different iterations. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I did make, like, kind of bath and beauty, like body butters and stuff like that at one point. Yeah. Um, essential oil, kind of like perfumey roller stuff. Yeah. So, again, like, it's all, like, all kind of under the same category, but a lot of it is still rooted in the herbalism so like when it was kind of time to go brick and mortar mm -hmm. the herbal apothecary emerged and just being a resource for people mm -hmm. is really one of like my main business goals um, there are a couple of other places that are definitely popping up in town but we're few and far between <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna just chime in like yeah you're the best one though right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah that's yourself so um, okay yeah. well in Baltimore City I might be one of the few and only but but there is a couple in the county. I haven't heard of them. Okay, <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you outside of it. I won't listen. <laughs> They're cool. We're we're all cool. Like there's a lot. There are other herbalists, it's obviously, only in Baltimore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But um, yeah, I, I mentioned that because um, I think some of the. Um, the older ones, I, I, I remember I still had the bottles. I had mm -hmm. the small bottles in the oh, house. Oh, cool. <laughs> so it shows you how long that I was like, wow. I've been around, I've been floating around. <laughs> and um, even the one I got when I got the uh, the face, uh, the, the, the mask refresher, I still have that next to my bed. And nice. I, I want to say, um, I forget exactly what I got it for, but I, I remember one was like, maybe mint and the other was definitely for a stomach situation I was having and I was like ah, just knocking them back <laughs> it's like yeah this is great it's, and it just felt like all right this is natural so I can't overdo it in, in, a, in, a, in a sense of like the same way that I would overdo Tylenol or I would overdo yeah. something that is that that has the ingredient, quote unquote, that like turmeric has in it, but it's not turmeric. It's a bunch of other stuff in it. Well, that's funny because like that's a question I get asked a lot. Like yeah. there are certain herbs that do have. Um, 
uh, caution to be used with. Um, you know, there are um, some drug interactions, but for the most part, the herbs that we're using um, on a general basis are like, I could say they're mostly safe for mostly all people. If you have a particular like food allergy or something yeah. to ginger, that's your responsibility. But ginger is like safe for most people and you really can't like overdose on ginger. So, yeah. It's one of those things where... It's all good. <laughs> you, you okay, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll trim it. It's, it's all good. Sorry about that. No, you're, you're all good. You're all good. Hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, if that's my husband, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> it wasn't, thank God. <laughs> Power off. <laughs> so let's see. Um, so I'll, I'll go to the next question. Then. Okay. Um, so w w when one thinks about the word holistic, um, health is often what comes to mind. Um, taking a holistic approach uh, to our health means we are nurturing all aspects of the physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, uh, mental well-being. Um, in what ways do you does a traditional um, business model kind of serve your business and what are some of the unique challenges that you face in being in this holistic realm? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like we are a traditional business, you know, most business is somewhat transactional <laughs> in nature. Um, and so you always have elements like that. But I think um, the holistic aspect is really about like when you come into our shop and it's mostly me or sometimes I have a helper or in the future, it could be another herbalist like we're here to talk to you and um, say hi. And a lot of times people, you know, want to, they come, a lot of people come in and, you know, they want to try tea for anxiety. And maybe, um, you know, if they were to go to like a doctor's office and say, I have anxiety, they might just get a prescription. I don't know. I'm just supposing this, sure. but you might get a prescription for a pill. Um, and if you come into our shop, you know, we might, People feel a little bit more comfortable telling us a little bit more of the why behind their anxiety. And sometimes it's like the only chance people have to unload be, or just be heard, yeah. um, you know, because it's surprising how many people keep stuff bottled up inside. And, the, you know, you just give them like a friendly place or like a receptive, energetic welcome. You know, if they've made it to our shop, they're open on some level yep. and they're seeking on some level. So, you know, being able to listen to people and, you know, we can ask questions, you know, about your anxiety that maybe a doctor wouldn't ask, you know, or we can say like, is your anxiety coming from like more of like a mental, like is your mind flipping over and over? Is anxiety coming from tension in your body? And we'll approach, um, you know, blending a tea for you from that information. Yeah. And oftentimes that just gives people a chance to speak about something in their life that they might not normally get to. So it's really like a customer service based model. And I think that that's holistic and we give people space if they want to talk about weird stuff, you know, yeah. like I like to talk about weird stuff. Look, if it's down a rabbit hole, I will go there with you. So I, I'm, I'm here for it. it's like, uh, you know, I, I, I need a tea that's going to make me more creative. Not need a tea that's going to make me successful. Do it. Make it happen. <laughs> No, but I, I, I can point you in the right direction of that. But I, but I, I, I do think of like maybe it, it, it's 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 deprecated a little bit, but I think of like some of those old movies where you'd go to the quote unquote medicine man or medicine woman, yeah. and it's just like you have this going on. I'm gonna put a dash of this, some of this in there, <laughs> and then boom, it's your your symptoms are gonna be improved or what have you. And it's is something that 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 works, and it's something that you can implement into it into your your day to day as opposed to. Every eight hours, make sure you take two of these. Yeah, exactly. And we don't always get it right. You know, one thing I had, you know, a couple people in this weekend and 
they were, you know, coming in with kind of a panacea issue. And I was, you know, we're always sure to say, like, we're not going to cure something for you, but we can definitely try to support you. Mm -hmm. And if I got this wrong, like, if this tea blend doesn't work for you, like, send me a message on social media, find me, call me, let me adjust it, you know. Um, And I think that as a business model is also, you know, a holistic (laughs) business model. I am not in the business of trying to turn people off. I'm in the business of trying to like, you know, give people encouragement and make them a believer back in nature, like get them reconnected back to their natural and like simplified living processes. And and I I think the the background and being a person with culinary experience, food experience, it it definitely helps that because like food is medicine at the end of the day. (laughs) And we've gotten so far away from it because we have a lot of non-food that's based in um, like, oh, this value proposition. This is a value meal and all of that. And like I said, I've been to your shop in multiple iterations. It's not something that's inaccessible. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So how do you personally define business success? And, And I think you've touched on it. It's uh, is it is it money? Is it freedom? Is it influence? Creative expression? Innovation? Or is it something else? Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, like at this point, you know, I'm a little bit older in life, and you know, once you hit that kind of like forty mark. Um, and you've had, you know, a chance at different careers, like things change. So my priority is a little bit my creative expression. At this point, it's through herbalism um, and, you know, quality of life (laughs) Um, and kind of being able to like do my own thing because um, some days I'm feeling it, some days I'm not. I get, you know, tired or stressed out. I don't want to have to like hit an alarm clock and, you know, go on the grind. And I know that that's changing for a lot of people, like yeah. in the post pandemic era and stuff like that. But um, yeah, and also I really want to be a, a resource in the Baltimore community. Like, that's really important to me because, I mean, I do love living here. I love this city. And um, I think the city needs the resource. And as more and more people are finding me, they're like, you know, I'm so glad you're here because people are looking, you know, I had a guy this weekend, he was looking for a pretty rare tincture and we had it. (laughs) And then I met this amazing, you know, man, and he got to tell me his story and he's doing this amazing work. And he was just really glad that we were there. So in that way, we're also like creating community in Baltimore as well around, um, you know, principles and ideals that are really important to me. And I think they're important to other people too. That's legit. That's really legit. So since, since we're there, right, let's start talking about, um, some of these other entrepreneurial questions. And the first (laughs) one that comes to mind is, um, what are your, your thoughts on being in business in Baltimore, like loving the city and kind of building that community? And you, you came here from Cali, right? Um, I, yeah, well, I was born and raised in uh, Northern California, um, and then college in Seattle and then straight over from Seattle to Baltimore. So, (laughs) um, yeah, and I've been here for almost 20 years now, (laughs) um, over on the East side in the Highland town neighborhood. So it was a natural, like, um, progression to open my shop over there. And I just love living here. I, you know, a girl from California. Northern California who goes to college in Seattle wouldn't expect to maybe end up in Baltimore, but it's like, you know, it's kind of, it's my home that I didn't know I needed. Um, And so being here in the community and meeting interesting people and people who um, are authentic and real and hold space for me to be my authentic self, um, that's what's important to me. Yeah, that's that's great. And I think going back to the, the thing that you touched on about being like in, being within the community, being a resource for the community, I think that that's something that is more prominent, especially now where we had that reset last year. You know, yeah. like there there's a health piece there, but also there's a being reconnected. Like I, I just remember that first like two months where nobody was really outside. No one yeah. was driving. I was like, <laughs> things are growing. Where did these ducks come from? You know what I mean? <laughs> things like that. And but I think at least like in certain parts of the city, um, there 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 there's um, 
like food deserts there are mm -hmm. just you'll have urgent care but you don't really have places to get herbal remedies and things of that nature so there are a few places, but not too too many where you can even get like, oh, they they have uh, dill. Yeah. You know? So I think ultimately, like what what you're doing, what your business does, is kind of filling in some of those those gaps. It has the potential really to fill in those gaps where just going there and trying to talk to a doctor and they already have prejudged you. Yes. And it's it's not you know, clearly we we you know you 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 told me this. It's not clearly a um, a, a replacement. No, absolutely, absolutely not. No, we, we love Western medicine yeah. um, and are grateful for all the technology and advances. I mean, my God, do not try to talk to me if you break your arm or need a, you know, surgery to I remove your I told my ACL, no. I, is there a team for me? <laughs> Excuse me, go I to the bleeding. damn doctor. I am bleeding from the shoulder from a bullet no. wound. You have a tension, right? You just right. drop, drop, and I'm good? Yeah, no, 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 no. This is a, you know, like, a, I don't know, I... Um, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm like, you know, herbalism is a little bit more of maybe like a lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, in that vein of being like holistic because we're looking at the whole self, the yeah. emotional body, the spiritual body, the physical body. But if your physical body is injured, please, we have some of the best medical care in the country. From <laughs> what I hear, people come from all over the world to go to Hopkins. I, I just see it now, like, <laughs> I am a zombie. Can you cure that? Right. Do, you have, do you have some droplets or something? It's a tea, right? Right? You know, just no. work it a little bit, tweak it. All right, cool. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. So, yeah, but I still think it is part of, it's not a replacement, obviously, you know, but it's still part of, it won't hurt to add that into your full gamut. Exactly. It's, it's going to be something that's only good can come from it of adding like herbs, adding something that is natural to your body yeah. it doesn't hurt. <laughs> well, you know, I tell people like, you know, you're probably an herbalist and you don't know it. If you have ever put oregano on your pizza, you're an herbalist. <laughs> well, or, I, it's like certain things because we get so, because it's certain things are, are, are older, right? In that we have a lot of intention now to kind of disconnect us from maybe things we learned from our parents mm -hmm. and grandparents and so on. So that thing kind of carries over. So I remember one thing of, um, it's a version of it, right? Where, oh, you got a stomach ache, drink some ginger ale. Yeah. Oh, your lower back hurts. It's probably a kidney issue. Uh, drink some uh, cranberry juice. And it gets watered down and diluted as we go along and somehow it's sold to us as this is a remedy. It's like, that's not quite a remedy. Yes, exactly. You, you hit the nail on the head, you know, the ginger ale for your stomach ache because yeah. the ginger helps with your digestion and it has what we call a carmative action. Yeah. It helps soothe the gases in your intestine <laughs> and that got turned into ginger ale. <laughs> it's like, here's your sugar. Here's your sugar. And if you've read the back of a Canadian dry lately, it is... I'm not quite sure there might be ginger in there. I didn't say that out loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all I know is they had like for something that has the word ginger in the name, they have to make the point that now with real ginger, I was like, look, can we, <laughs> yeah. can we, can we figure out something here? Was, was it fake ginger before? What we, we like? Never mind. Um, well, and it is really just a generational thing. Yeah. Like, you know, my grandparents came out of the depression. Um, and I remember like, um, my grandparents used a lot of like throat lozenges and stuff. And then when I got into herbalism and I realized some of the herbs that were originally put into throat lozenges, it, it all made sense. And so now when we're using like even a Ricola throat lozenger, like there's actually a reason there are some like medicinal herbs in there. And you know, that really was only a generation or two behind us, depending on how old you are these days, hundred years. I don't you disappointed the people of Ricola. I'm because sorry, you I totally you dissed. Did, did, I dissed no, Canadian no, Dry no, and no, Ricola. No, no, no. You didn't in the give it his energy. You didn't give it the Ricola. You didn't give it the energy. You oh, okay. Energy. Well, I was yeah, I was trying to keep it calm. So, <laughs> so um, let's see. Um, and, and, I, and I'll throw in this one last thing before I ask you this last question before I get into rapid fire questions. Okay. So, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I will say I had this this period where I, I get panic attacks on occasion and. I had this one that I just, I just couldn't shake, and I was like, I am going to die. That was literally the perpetual thought, and I just remember this is the first time. This is how I got introduced to Indian food. 
Mm -hmm. And I just remember feeling reborn after eating this Indian food and I started going through what was in it and I had like chicken biryani and mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, there is a lot of cinnamon, star anise, all of these anti, I was like, I feel great now. <laughs> so I kind of have looked at it and I granted it's still food and food food, but yeah. I kind of look at it like, all right, there are some elements in it. I'm getting something out of it that makes me feel refreshed, makes me feel better and it's tasty and all of that stuff, but I, I recognize that those those herbs, those those natural ingredients that are in there, because it's a lot of cinnamon in there. Yeah, so. a lot of healing spices. Yeah. You know, like we use spices in our cooking and think of them as just flavor, and they are, but I like to call them healing spices. I think of cinnamon and star anise mm -hmm. as like healing spices because they have, you know, properties that you know, contribute to our physical bodies like healing and they taste good bonus, you know? And this is why I disrespect pumpkin spice as a flavor profile. <laughs> it's like you're underselling and being healing spices, you simpletons. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I, I'll, someday I'll do a class on the healing properties of pumpkin spice. It's definitely in the works. Yeah. I missed the season this year, but I'll get, I'll get on it. <laughs> See, I'll have a love-hate relationship. I'll be there to troll it and like, <laughs> <laughs> I recognize this is good, and here's why, but also, no PSL. Well, you know, I mean, it I'm is. Sorry. It's I'm a sorry. white girl thing. <laughs> it's an everybody thing. No. No. Uh, simpleton thing. <laughs> sorry. So, uh, and, and lastly, just so we can definitely have this buttoned up, um, for the fine folks out there, regale them with what an apothecary is. Sure. I mean, an apothecary was traditionally a place in the community that people would come to get their medicine in air quotes, I would say. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a precursor to a pharmacy mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And um, if you know anything about pharmacies and like a compounding pharmacy where they actually like make... Um, you know, medicine, pharmaceutical medicines, an apothecary is in that same vein. But, you know, I call myself an herbal apothecary because we are focused on the botanicals. Um, but yeah, we create and compound medicine as well. <laughs> herbal medicine, a, a tea is an herbal medicine. So see that, that's that's called definitely hammering the point home uh, so so as we wrap up here um i have my rapid fire questions for you what's shaking my constituency rob lee here and i want to tell you about something sweet no no not just my sweet voice and you'll get back to the podcast in a moment but i want to tell you about one of my presenting sponsors for this month waffy waffle do you like dessert I hope you do. Do you like over-the-top dessert waffles? Well, Waffy is right up your alley. Waffy has yeast-based waffles made with love and topped with everything from syrup to sprinkles, you know, the regular stuff, to ice cream and even cheesecake toppings. Treat yourself to something sweet today. Visit Waffy at www.waffywaffle.com and on Instagram at Waffy Waffle. And don't forget to tell them that Rob Lee sent you. So the way that these rapid fire questions work, I got five questions and uh, pretty much I just need whatever the answer is. No additional context unless you really need to put it out there. Okay. All right. Most popular herb at Charmington Holistics. Peppermint. Yeah, people got some stanky breath. Uh, no, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, what, what's always called an herbal remedy, but it's really not. Like something that's presented as, oh, this is great for you, but it's like, nah, that, that might be bullshit. Mm. And there's no shade, it's just from your vantage point. From my right? vantage point, a lot of um, supplements mm. that masquerade, that are vitamins and minerals. Gotcha. That's legit. Uh, what is the holistic perspective? Uh, I think the holistic perspective to me, I think of it as the X, Y, Z access and everything in between mind, body, spirit, and everything in between. <laughs> okay. I mean, you, you, you're, you're answering them. I mean, you are rapidly going through these. Uh, favorite tea, since you drink so much tea. Uh, that's like, you know, when people would ask me, what's your favorite 
thing to make as a chef? I'm like, I don't know. It's like picking a child. Well, that might be another question about that. So I hope you're ready. <laughs> um, uh, overall, my favorite tea is generally anything super floral. I like the flowery stuff. I drink a lot of calendula, rose, um, things like that. I'm an Earl Grey person. Uh, <laughs> just, well, me. actually, Earl Grey is floral, you know, in nature. It has what, bergamot? That's why they call me Bobby Bergamot. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> That's what my alias is. So it's not baseball for you five folks out there listening. <laughs> Lastly, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. What is your favorite pastry? Oh, definitely ice cream. <laughs> I, as a pastry? Ice cream? Yeah, well, as a pastry chef, I worked in restaurants okay. and I made ice cream. I so, did, okay. I, yeah, I like ice cream. What, what flavor? <laughs> the weirder, the better. All right. In fact, if you put tea in ice cream, I'll marry you. I I believe Tahaka Brothers has a really tasty like honey and Earl Grey ice cream. Oh, I haven't tried that one, but I definitely love Tahaka. Oh, they have a Jasmine Blues, which is the blueberry mm -hmm. with the jasmine. That's a good one. They get it. They get it. Yeah. Uh, so as we wrap up, uh, that's pretty much all I had. Um, I want you to please um, tell the fine folks where to check you out on social media. Where can he find you at? And um, that'll be that. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, we are located in. Highland Town on the corner of basically Eastern and Conkling at 425 South Conkling Street. We're open uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 12 to 5. Um, we're on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Find us. Um, I have fun with it all. I try to get out there and, you know, just be myself and be relatable, talk about herbs and yeah, so find us. <laughs> and it's gonna be Charmington Holistics on those? Charmington Holistics on everything. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> for Bettina Perry of Charmington Holistics, I am Rob Lee saying that there are herbs in and around Baltimore. You just have to look for them. <laughs>